Hello guys, Dr. Levy is here. Now, I want to break down HIV and the immune system in a way that you can easily understand. And if at all you are a HIV patient, you will get to understand how to maneuver around the infection. Now, HIV means Human Immunodeficiency Virus. So it is a viral condition. And once viral conditions get into your body, it's difficult for them to leave. The same scenario to HIV. Now, what HIV does in your body is it targets your CD4 cells. So in your body, you have an immunity. And this immunity is basically your army that will help you fight different conditions, be it viruses, bacteria, protozoa, uh, toxic chemicals. So this immunity or this army is the one that is responsible for that action. Now, I want, to know, I want you to know when you're born, you're born with a type of immunity, which is called an innate immunity, the natural one. So it will help you fight different things in the body on a daily basis. But when this system gets overwhelmed, then along the way as you grow, there's one that you adapt or that you acquire. That is called acquired immunity. From just the name, acquired or adaptive immunity. So you acquire it as you grow or along the way. So this one is the one that takes control or takes charge when the innate immunity is overwhelmed. Now, HIV targets this army and then kills it. But HIV is very interesting. It doesn't just kill every immune cell in your system. It is very specific on, what, uh, on how it acts. So in your body, I already told you, you have an immune system. Now, this immune system comes from two organs. Number one is the bone marrow. And in the bone marrow, the cells or the army that comes from the bone marrow is what we call the B cells. And these B cells, their action is just to produce antibodies. I'm sure most of you know about antibodies and antigens. So antibodies that basically destroy or mark the invading parasite, which is called the antigen. So that is the function of the B cells. Number two cells... They come from the thymus, the gland that is in your throat or behind your, uh, your esophagus. That is called the thymus gland. And those cells that come from the thymus gland are called the T cells. And in these T cells, we have two. One is the T helper, so they help. And the other one is the T killer, so they kill or destroy. Now, these are the cells that HIV targets. So I want you to know that the T helper, its function is specific so t helper is like is like a general is like the, the the commander so the t helper cells what they do is one they activate the t killer so that they can actively kill invading viruses also the t helper activates the b cells in the bone marrow so that they start producing antibodies and these antibodies they do not play any other role they don't kill microorganisms what they do is they put on a marker just like uh, 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 the road uh, authorities, when they want to destroy a structure, they mark it with a red mark. So that's the same way antibodies act. So they mark viruses, they mark bacteria, and all these invading microorganisms, so that your T killer cells or your other macrophages can identify and then destroy. Because if you don't identify, then you might end up destroying your own cells. So you have to identify between the cell, the body cells, and the invading cells. So that is the function of the B cells. But the B cells are activated by the T helper again. And number three, there is another group of cells that what they do is they engulf. They just engulf microorganisms and viruses. And then they destroy it through different enzymes and different chemicals. And these, uh, micro these cells are called macrophages. Now the engulfing power of macrophages is also activated by the T helper cells. So you can imagine how T helper cells are the most important in the entire immune system. Now what HIV does is it comes and fuses with these T helper cells and then renders them inactive. So it destroys the T helper cells. So that means if you've destroyed the commander, then we will not recruit T helper cells. Then we will not recruit or we will not activate the production of antibodies from B cells in the bone marrow. Then we will not activate macrophages. So therefore, we are now liable or we are now... Uh, uh, prone to attack by any uh, invading parasite that is coming in, including the HIV itself. So this is what happens. So HIV does not kill you. HIV does not cause any harm to you. But the only thing that it does is destroys the T helper cells, which is the commander 
of the army that is supposed to help you fight conditions. Now you become vulnerable to any other condition. Now all those conditions that will come in as a result of this uh, compromised immunity is what we call AIDS, acquired immunodeficiency syndrome. So it is acquired, which means you get it. So And syndrome means a collection of different types of conditions. So what kills you is that AIDS, the syndrome. It is not the HIV. The HIV kills the T helper cells and the immune system in general. And then these other conditions that attack you, including cancer, including pneumonia, TB, meningitis, uh, candidiasis, all these conditions that come in are what we call the syndrome. And that is what destroys you. Now, I want you to also understand the reason why we use ARV therapy or ARVs is because ARVs, one, they lower the multiplication of the virus. So they block the multiplication of the virus and therefore they lower the, the productivity or the reproduction of the virus. That, again, lowers the viral load. Okay, Once it lowers the viral load, that means you can get to a point that it is undetectable in your system. You are still HIV positive, but the viral load is too low that we cannot detect it in your system. And there is where you cannot transmit this HIV. So the reason why you use ARVs is because you want to lower viral multiplication, you want to lower the viral load, and then you want to prevent people from uh, infecting others with HIV or the spread of HIV. Now, the point that we forget is, as you use these ARVs to lower this viral load, something else has to happen. Your immune system has to go up so that it takes over uh, the function of these ARVs. So ARVs just lower the viral load, and then your immune system takes over. This part of the immune system taking over is where we mess or is where we fail. So we rely so much on ARVs, hoping that they will help in HIV treatment, but we forget, or management, but we forget we need to boost our body immune system so that it takes over and assists in ARVs function. So how do you boost this immunity? That is the question. Now, if you've been told to go and eat fruits and all these uh, substances, all this honey and stuff, you are actually creating a serious problem because fruits have fructose, honey has fructose and that is sugar. This fructose is the only sugar that is converted in the liver to triglycerides which is basically fats and that will lead you into a fatty liver. I want you to know this that a fatty liver or a, the liver and the kidneys play a very major role in antibody production so the liver plays a role in antibody production that is part of your immune system. Also vitamin D synthesis which is also part of the immune system. So if you have a fatty liver, or if you have a problem with the liver, you also have a problem with the kidneys, you will not form vitamin D actively. You will also have a problem with excreting ARVs, because ARVs, they go through the mouth. So everything that goes through the mouth, most of them go through the mouth. So everything that goes through the mouth has to be absorbed, goes into the liver, it is broken down into active ingredients, and then those active pharmaceutical ingredient is the one that will cause or will elicit an action. So we need the liver to activate these ARVs. Now the problem is this. Most people have are, are eating very bad diets, are obese, okay? And you have exposure to different things that affect your liver, like alcohol, okay? Like bad foods, like wheat products, like seed oils, like sugar in general, in all forms. So once you do that, you affect your liver and your kidneys. Now your liver has to play a role in metabolism of these drugs. And therefore, if it doesn't break these drugs down, you will not get the active ingredient. That tells you a problem with the liver is a problem with HIV. So if you're affecting your liver already, these drugs are coming in to be activated by the liver. So these drugs will not be activated. So your HIV will uh, uh, proliferate. Also, if your prob the liver breaks these down drugs into active ingredients and also the toxic drugs are eliminated by the liver or they are made, rendered uh, less toxic by the liver for excretion. So if your liver has a problem, you will not excrete these drugs. And therefore, they'll start accumulating in the system. Once they start accumulating in the system, that will mean toxicity. So all the side effects of these drugs will be experienced. Again, the kidneys play a role in excretion because most of these drugs are excreted through urine. That is the kidney function. So if you have failing kidneys, then you'll have a problem in excretion. And therefore, the drugs and toxins will start building up in your system. And then you will suffer the consequences of toxicity. So you must protect the kidneys because the number one cause of kidney problem is insulin resistance. And insulin resistance hails from chronic carbohydrates intake and chronic sugar intake. 
So if you block the sugar, if you block the consumption of carbohydrate, then you rejuvenate the kidneys, you excrete drugs normally. You also recover from a fatty liver or uh, hepatitis and therefore your liver will break down drugs adequately and you will have adequate action and excretion of these drugs from your system. So ARVs require a functional liver. That's why we tell you to not to drink, uh, to eat these unhealthy foods, the fruits, the honey, the wheat products, the seed oils, the sugar, so that you protect your liver and then your liver will protect you. You also protect your kidneys so that your kidneys protect you. Now, since ARVs are lowering the viral load, viral load and you want the immunity to take over. So number one, you've fixed your liver. You've also fixed your kidneys. So immunity starts to come up. Number two, vitamin D is very important. And therefore, vitamin D, you know, all of you know, vitamin D plays a very important role in immunity. So vitamin D is not coming from the sun. But you need the sun to activate vitamin D. Vitamin D is coming from cholesterol. And this cholesterol has to come from diet. Or even the synthesis from the liver. So consumption of uh, saturated fats is very important. Consumption of fatty meats, the fish, the, 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 the liver... Organ meats, chicken, make it organic. The eggs, these are foods that are very necessary to boost your immunity. They will give you the healthy cholesterol. You will then activate it through sunlight to get active vitamin D through the kidneys and the liver. And then that vitamin D plays a very important role in uh, your immunity. Now also remember, HIV blocks the receptors for vitamin D. And therefore you actually need high vitamin D supplementation. So you need that sunlight you will need uh, that uh, cholesterol. Again, now you've taken vitamin D through the sun. Now the next thing you'll do, you'll have to rest. You have to sleep so that you can stabilize your, all your hormones in the system. Sleep is very important. At least seven to eight hours a night of healthy sleep. Then reduce the amount of stress in your life. Because stress will raise cortisol. Stress will raise blood sugars. Stress will alter your immunity. And that is what we don't want. Okay? Then above all, at least... Uh, Then above all, take this as a summary. Take this as a summary from this. So, vitamin D, very necessary. Sleep, very necessary. Lower stress, very necessary. Exercise, very necessary. Fasting, very necessary for your rejuvenation of your kidneys and your liver and boosting your immune system in general. And then healthy keto. So go on a low carbohydrate diet. If you can, go on a zero carbohydrate diet, which is just basically the healthy keto. So bunting diets, carnivore diets, healthy keto, and low carbohydrate diets, these are the foods that will help you boost your immunity and fasting. So once you boost that immunity, then you will not struggle with the ARV side effects of the ARV uh, management or treatment. Okay, so these are the ways that will have you, your liver functioning, you'll have your kidneys functioning, you'll have your, your immune system going up or your immunity going up and help you to suppress viral load in general. And that is how you survive.